Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking circle transition using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at a duration of about 10 seconds. And I'm also going for a 30 FPS with this um, project. So I'm just going to press OK. Once I've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to come over here and we're going to create an ellipse. Now, if you don't see the ellipse tool, just uh, long click and hold on any one of these tools and you will get the ellipse tool. Once we've got that, we can double click on the ellipse tool to draw the ellipse. Now, the first thing that you need to do here is you need to make sure that you change your fill to none and you need to get your colors and change it here in the stroke settings. Now I'm going to color hunt for my colors and this is the color scheme that I'm using. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this value and paste it into After Effects. Cool, so now that I've got my ellipse, now what I need to do is I need to open up the ellipse path one settings over here. The first thing that I need to do is I need to unlink it and I need to make sure that they are both 1900. So once we've done that, then we can link it back up again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open up the stroke settings. I'm gonna change the line cap to a round cap and I'm just going to change the stroke width to let's say 500. And now that I've got that, now I've got this oversized circle on my screen. So that's looking pretty good. Now we have to animate that. So to do that, I'm gonna add a trim path. And so once I've done that, then I can actually start the animation process. So now if your circle line over here isn't curved, please make sure that you change the line cap to a round cap. So now I'm ready to animate. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this end value over here. So I'm gonna set the stopwatch. I'm gonna set that value to zero and I'm gonna start it at around about 10 frames. Then I'm gonna move forward in time to let's say one second and 20 frames. And then I'm gonna bring that up to 100%. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this cool looking circle evolving on your screen. The next step that we need to do is we need to add a scale animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it at the end of my animation here. So one second and 20 frames. I'm going to click on the stopwatch at 100%. Move to the start of my composition and set that back down to zero. So now I've got a scale in and a trim path animation going. And that's looking pretty good. But we're going to animate the stroke width as well. So we're gonna open up the contents again, open up the ellipse, and this time we're gonna go into the stroke settings. I'm gonna start it at the end again, because I've already set it here to 500. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the start of the composition, and I'm gonna set that to, let's say 100. So now if I press U on my keyboard, I have these three keyframes. So one is animating the stroke width, another the scale and another the trim path. What we need to do is we need to easy ease those keyframes. So you can right click and go to easy ease. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the graph editor and I'm gonna highlight this side. Please make sure that you're in the speed graph editor. So I highlight all of these keyframes and I'm just going to drag this over somewhere around about there. Now you can play around with some of these settings. The closer you move it to the edge, the more acceleration it will have and the slower the slowdown will be. But anyways, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to move on to the next layer. So I'm gonna rename this. This is going to be called 01. Cool. So now I'm gonna move on to the next color. So I'm gonna duplicate this, Command or Control D to duplicate. And once we've got that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the color. So now in Color Hunt, I'm just gonna grab this value and put it back into After Effects. Cool. So now that I've changed the color, the next thing that we need to do is we need to change it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna open up the contents and I'm gonna open up Ellipse 1 and the Ellipse 1 path. And I'm just gonna change the size. I'm gonna bring it down to, let's say about 1050. So it ju just fits just inside there. And once I'm happy with that, then I'm also going to change the stroke width. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up U on my keyboard to bring up my keyframes and I'm just gonna change, make sure that you're on this last keyframe over here. And I'm gonna bring that down to let's say 350. 
What you don't want is you don't want any black lines showing when the animation comes to a halt. So if you have to increase it, you know, just to be sure, then you can also do that. So now once I've changed the width and the size, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press R on my keyboard for rotation and I'm going to just change how that circle begins just to randomize it a little bit more. So now I've got a circle beginning at 90 degrees as well as the outer one. That's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that again. So make sure that you click on the layer, press Control or Command D to duplicate and repeat the process again. The first thing is to change the color. So I'm in Color Hunt again. I'm going to use this color, bring it back into After Effects. Cool. So now that the color is changed, now I need to change the size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the contents, open up the ellipse, open up the ellipse path. And this time I'm going to bring it down to, let's say 320. And so now you can see that I do have a black line around that circle. So what I need to do is I need to press U on my keyboard to bring up my stroke settings and I need to increase the stroke width. So I'm just going to bring that up to, let's say maybe 380. Cool. So now that I have that, the last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to change up some of the layers as well, just to randomize it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm, firstly, I'm going to press R for rotation and I'm just going to add another 90 degrees to this one over here. And so now it should start at a different time to the others. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on my timeline over here and I'm just going to offset this last frame. I'm going to make sure that it's five frames off from the start. And so now if I preview that, you can see that the circles are going at different times and that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that again. So I'm going to come down here to the first circle and I press Ctrl or Command D and then I'm going to drag it to the bottom of my timeline and I'm just going to bring it back to the start. So again, same kind of process. I'm just going to change this color just so that I know that uh, this is one of the outer circles. It's not one of the main three that I have here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the color. So I'm using this as my final color. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here to my stroke settings and then change it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the size. Now you can be as random as you like over here. So once you open up the ellipse path settings, you can make it bigger if you like, smaller, totally up to you. So I'm going to bring this one down to let's say about 1300. And so now it's got the, all the circles going in together at the same time. And you can also change the stroke width as well. So if you want to open that up again, and maybe if you want to bring that down to, let's say 300, you can also do that. So the more random you make your designs, the better that this transition is actually going to look. So that's looking cool. Now you can keep on going and adding more layers, but to be honest, I'm using the colors from Color Hunt and there's only four colors in this color palette. So I'm going to keep it there. So what I need to do now is I just need to end this animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to two seconds and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hold uh, Option or Alt and click on the right bracket and that's going to trim that layer down to there. And then pretty much all I need to do is just scale out the rest of these three circles. So I'm just going to highlight all those three layers, press S for scale. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe at two seconds for all of those. Then I'm going to move forward in time 10 frames. So now I have to click off and now we're going to do this individually. So the first one I'm going to bring down to zero. Then the second circle, I'm just going to kind of scale it until it's off the screen. And I'm going to do the same for the third circle. And so now if you've done that correctly, now all of the circles will kind of fade away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all of those, get to the graph editor. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in the speed graph editor, highlight all these keyframes, and then I'm just going to bring it all the way to the right hand side. So now if we preview that, we have a nice 
kind of out animation for this uh, transition. Cool. So now the final thing that we can do here is if you want to add some motion blur, you can just click this uh, little box over here and that will now add some motion blur as the circles are spinning. So there, my computer needs to render that a little bit. And the final thing that we can do is if you want to add an adjustment layer and search for the effect called noise, you can add a small bit of noise onto this, let's say maybe 5%. And that also just you know, makes the animation look a little bit nicer. Anyways. That's it for this quick tutorial on how to do the circle transitions. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.